Hi, Naisha. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Very good. Very good. So, how is your practice going on in mathematics? Nice. Currently, I'm understanding all my sums and it is very easy with you. Great, great. So, can you tell us about yourself before we begin with the class? I'm Nasha. I love sports and I play archery. I play uh, weddings and archery. And after 67 days, I'm having my tournaments. And with that, I'm having my match test. So, here yeah, I'm here to take help of Anita. Thank you. I think you'll get excellent performance in both sports and in mathematics also. Let's just practice with whatever you need to learn. So just share with me what is there a part of your test so that we could focus on that. Yes. Can you see this screen? Not yet. Yes, now it is coming up. Yes. Okay, so this is about equations in one variable and you've got questions which are based on solving equations. Can you move forward? Can, can we see different kinds of questions you want to learn? Okay, correct. Yeah, just go to pages, yeah. Okay, just go to page 10, 11, 12. The end, let me see, till what you have to learn. Okay, oh, that's good. Inequalities also. So it is not just equations, it is inequalities. Uh, can I see the next page, please? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's see the word problem. Okay. Can you please read the word problem here? Go down here. Yes. Question number seven. Can you please read this? Of the three consecutive natural numbers, five, five times the smallest number is nine more than four times the greatest number. Find the numbers. So, do you, do you understand the question? Can you solve it? Mm. No. It is difficult now, but I think at the end of the class, you should be in a position to answer this question and any other question, right, related to your curriculum. That's the whole idea. So what we need to do is basically learn first how to write an equation because the word problems, you have to write an equation. Once you write the equation, you have to solve the equation, right? So these are the two things which we have to learn. So you can stop sharing. I got good idea about what you need to do. So in the first part of the class, I will focus mainly on solving equations, simple ones. And then in the second part, we will focus on uh, solving word problems. And we'll take up uh, your example, seven type of word problems also. Is that okay? Yes. Here now is uh, begin with a very, very simple example. So we are trying to solve linear equations. With one variable, is it okay? Yes. So there will be only one unknown in our equation and we need to find what that unknown is. That is what is called solution of an equation. Is that clear to you? Yes. So solve means what? Understand that. Solve means find value of unknown. Let me say unknown variable. Is that clear to you? Yes. Perfect. So let's begin with very simple example, if I say x plus 5 is equal to, oh, sorry, I wanted to write x plus 5. Okay, so if I say x plus 5 is equal to, let us say 8, then what is x equal to? Your uh, screen is still showing x is equal to 5. x plus 5 is equal to 8. Can you see the screen properly? Yes, no. no. Okay, great. So the question is, if x plus 5 equals to 8, what is x? 3. Yes, how did you find that? Because it, uh, when we get 
when when we get ill, uh, we have to add five to three. That's why we five to three. three, right? So you say five to three, but what we will adopt is we will adopt a reciprocal reverse operation. X plus five is a, right? So what we will do here is we'll do minus five both sides. Do you see that? So, in that case, if you do this, you are left with only x here and 8 minus 5 is 3. Do you see that? So, we call yes. this strategy as isolate variable. But we can do it simply. So, why we have to add these steps? Good question. Only simple, simple equations can be solved with what you did, but normally in the test you are going to get more complicated so we have to follow a procedure or a process that always helps correct yes so what you did, said just now is you solved using mental math you did mental math is it okay yes yes so that is a good approach provided you could easily get the answers mentally but otherwise when there are too many things involved we might have to use a process. Is that okay? So what we are doing is a process. Is that okay? Yes. So we are learning a way to solve equations in simple steps, right? So what is the process? Process is sequence of steps. Let me write down here. What is the process? Process is sequence of steps. My idea here is to make these steps simple, simple and simpler for you so that you can easily solve a very, very difficult question. Do you get the idea? Yes. Okay. So, let's continue. So, we did first type of question. Now, let me write down another type of question. So, we write here. So, I'll take x as my variable, right? So, x is my variable. I'm saying x plus 7 is equal to 10, right? So, what is x? Three. If I say x minus three equals to let's say ten, then what is x? Seven. Yeah. If I say two x is equal to ten, then what is x? Eight. Two x. Two times x is ten. Two times x is ten. Then what is x? Five. If I say one third of an x is 10, then what is x equal to? Mm. You'll multiply by 3 and get 30. Do you see that? Because 30 divided by 3 will give you 10. Is that okay? Yes. So, in each of these questions, do you think, can you tell me what you did? You did reverse operation. We call that as a reverse operation. You did it mentally. But that's what you did. So it was x plus 7. You wanted, you said 3 because, you know, minus 7 minus 7 will give you 3, right? Yes. x minus 3 is 10. So uh, I should have added 3 here. So when I add 3, I get 13. So this answer will be 13. Do you see that? Yes. You have to add. So the reverse operation. 2x equals to 10. You divide by 2. That means multiply by half and you get 5. Yes? Yes. 3x equals to 10. We multiply by 3 and you get 30. Do you see that? We call this as a reverse operation. So reverse of addition is subtraction. subtraction, reverse of subtraction is addition, reverse of multiplication is division, and reverse of division is multiplication. Is multiplication. that clear to you? Yes. So, with that reverse operation, as one of our main things to answer, we'll now complicate the question a bit. So, let us see. Now, the question is 2x plus 3 equals 2, let us say 9. How will you solve this question? Tell me. 3 times, say 3 times x minus 7 is 24. You want to isolate, so your idea is isolate x. Is it okay? That means get rid of everything else.
In this case, we have all other numbers. To get rid of all other numbers one by one, how will I get rid of 7? I can add 7 on both sides. Do you see that? Yes. In that case, I am left with, this cancels, right? So, I am left with 3x equals to what? 24 plus 7, which is 31, correct? Yes. And now what will I do? I will divide by 3 on both these sides. And so I get x equals to 31 divided by 3. Do you see that? Yes. Now in this question, a natural number was not your answer. And therefore, you found it difficult to do mentally. You get the idea? Yes. So when the answers are not straightforward or say natural numbers, then it becomes very difficult to answer the questions. Correct? And that is why the method helps. So let's take another example. So let's say now we have 5x minus 3 equals to, let's say, 29. How will you solve this? 5x means uh, we will subtract 3 from 3. Yeah, so I'll add 3 on both these sides. You this time. So what do yes. I get? I get 5x equals to 29 plus 3 is 32. Then I'm going to divide by 5 on both these sides. Correct? Yes. So we get x equals to 32 over 5. Is that clear to you? Yes. Very. Now let's continue with such examples. So we have half of x minus 3 equals to 20. How are you going to do it? Tell me. We will First. add 3 on both these sides. What do you get? Uh, here we will get 0 and there will get 23. So, 3, 3 cancel, half x equals to 23. Now, what will you do? You will now multiply by 2 on both these sides, right? So, this dot is for multiplication. So, when you multiply by 2 on both these sides, this 2 and half becomes 1. And so, we have isolated x. Do you see that? Yes x equals to 23 times 2, which is 46. 46. Yes. Is now, at this stage, you can also check your answer. So, if I do half times 46 minus 3, what do I get? Half times 46 is 23, and 23 minus 3 is equal to 20, which is right-hand side. Do you see that? Yes. So, in checking operation, we started with the left-hand side and we landed with right-hand side, which was exactly the same. And therefore, we say that this equation is true and x equals to 46 is solution of the equation. You understand now? Yes. So, when we say solution of the equation, it really makes left-hand side of the equation equal to right-hand side. So, it's a very important thing to understand, correct? Yes. Now, let's move forward. And this time, we are going to take slightly more complicated questions. So, we have 2 times x plus 3 equals to 8. How will you solve this equation? Tell me. We will How will you solve this equation? 3 on both these sides. No. First, you have to divide by 2. So, we kind of do the operations which are in the reverse order. So, it is basically reverse order, right? Do you understand reverse order? Mm -hmm. So, in reverse order, when you have to solve this equation, we will do outside the bracket first. That must be known. So, first you open the bracket, then you do exponents, then you do division, multiplication. Or you do addition. Addition. So, so in this case, what we are going to do, this is in bracket. I can't hear your voice clearly. Okay. Now is it is my voice better now? It is very low. Oh, I see. Now is my voice okay? Yes. Now okay, very good. Thank you. So, okay, let me begin with this uh, again. Okay, let me clear this here. Now, let's take up another example. And this time, we have a different kind of an example. We are going to use a bracket. 
So, 2 times x plus 3 equals to, let's say, 8. How are you going to solve this particular question? So, here we are going to do reverse operations, right? Yes. So, reverse operation means in this case, first we have to divide by 2 and then take away 3. You get the idea. So, we have 2 times x plus 3 equals to 8. We are going to divide both sides by 2. That means multiplication by half. You get the idea? Yes. So, once you do this, that 2 cancels with 2, it becomes 1, and you are left with x plus 3 on your left-hand side, correct? Yes. And you have 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And now what will you do? You will take away 3 from both the sides and we get x plus 3 minus 3 equals to 4 minus 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So we get x equals to 4 minus 3 is 1. And so our answer is x equals to 1. Is this clear to you? Yes. Now let us check. Check means start with the left hand side, which is 2 times x plus 3 we substitute x equals to 1 here. So, 2 times 1 plus 3, which is 2 times 1 plus 3 is 4, and that gives you 8, and this is equal to right-hand side. Correct? Yes. And therefore, the solution is correct. Do you understand the checking process? Yes. Perfect. So, let me clear the screen and move forward. Let's have another kind of an equation. Now, these equations will involve fractions, and this is a ratio kind of an equation x minus 5 over 3 equals to 7. How am I going to solve this equation? Tell me. x minus 5 over 3 equals to 7. How will I solve? I need to isolate x. I could multiply by 3 on both the sides. Do you see this? So, when I do that, in that case, the 3 cancels with 3, and so I've got to get rid of fractions, and I have an equation, which is x plus, sorry, x minus 5 equals to 21. Is this step clear to you? Yes. Now, you can add 5 on both the sides. We have x minus 5. We are adding 5 on both the sides, and we get x equals to 21 plus 5 as 26. Is this clear to you? Um, yes. Left hand side, I'm going to check. So, check means I'm putting 26 for x. So, 26, my, oh, sorry, 26 minus 5 over 3. 26 minus 5 is 21. 21 over 3 is indeed 7, which is right hand side. Is that clear to you? Yes. That is how we solve the equations, right? Some more examples coming your way. Now, just a second, can you show that screen again? Pardon? Can you show the previous screen again? Yes, yes. So, is this clear to you? Yes. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay. So, let's move forward. So, this time I have equation which is x plus 4 over, let's say, 5 equals to 3 over, let's say, 7. How am I going to solve this equation now? Multiply 5 on both the sides. So, multiply by 5 from both the sides, you will get rid of this 5. What will you do about 7? We can multiply by 7 also, right? Yes. So, we will multiply by common denominator. Once you do that, on this side, the 5 cancels. On the other side, the 7 cancels. And what do you get? The equation now is 7 times x plus 4, both should be multiplied by 7, equals to 3 times 5. Is that clear to you? Yes. Okay. So, now we can open the bracket. So, when you open the bracket, we apply the distributive property, which you learned earlier in polynomials. And we get 7 times x as 7x, 
7 times 4 as 28, and that is equal to 3 times 5, which is 15. That is 15. Now you have yes. to take away 28. Now taking away, I'm doing slightly different because we know if I do minus 28 minus 28 on the left hand side, we get 0. So I could also write this as 7x equals to 15 minus 28. Is that clear to you? Yes. Now what is 15 minus 28? Tell me. 15 minus 28 we get as 8, 13. Minus 13 because minus 28 is bigger. Now mm. we need to find x. So x is equals to minus 13 over 7. Is this clear to you? Yes. So now our solution is an integer uh, as a rational number, which is minus 13 over 7, right? Do you see that? Right. So that is how we are going to solve a question which involves ratios, correct? So let's practice with some more of the same kind and see. Let, let this time we have x minus 3 over, let's say, 5 equals to uh, 10 over, let's say, let's say, 3. How will you solve this? Tell me. Uh, we will multiply 5 on both the sides and 3 on both the sides. So 5 times 3 on both the sides, correct? And then we'll cut 5, 5. Yeah, then you cut 5, 5 and 3, 3. And 3, 3. And then you get 3 times x yes, minus 3 minus equals three. to 10, 10 times 5. Times correct? five. Yes. Now if you look at it, this is kind of a ratio. What you really see is that we have cross multiplied. We call this as cross multiplication. Yes. So what we did, basically, if you see, we got 10 times 5. That means 10 gets multiplied with 5, cross multiplication. And this whole thing gets multiplied by 3. By right? 3. Yes. So this is called cross multiplication. So in case you land up with such a situation, which is kind of a proportion, then you can do cross multiplication. When you see something like a proportion. So what is a proportion? When we have ratio equal to mark and another ratio. Is that okay? That is called yes. a proportion. Now, so now we will open and solve it further. So 3 times x is 3x minus yes. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 equals to 50. So 3x equals to 50 plus 9, which is 59. And x is equal to 59 divided by 2. Correct? Yes. So now see, now these questions cannot be solved with your mental abilities so fast. Correct? Yes. So we have to follow a process. Now taking up simple questions really help us to understand the process. And now we are applying it for more and more difficult questions. Is, is this clear to you, right? Yes. Now let's take up examples like x over 3 plus 2 over, let us say, 6 equals to, let's say, 1. How am I going to solve this question? Tell me. Uh, we multiply 3 on both the sides. Why not 6? So we have to take common denominator. Just as you solved rational expressions, right? So 3 and 6 means a common denominator is 6, correct? Yes. Or what you could do is, you, you know that the common denominator is the lowest common multiple here, right? Which yes. in this case is equal to 6. So what I can do here is multiply everything by 6. Do you see this? Yes. So I will do this and then continue. So in the first case, I get 2x plus 2 equals to 6, correct? Because here, 3 goes 2 times in 6. Here, 6 gets cancelled. You're left with 2, correct? Yes. We get 2 times x plus 2 equals to 6. And now, we can solve it. So we can say 2x equals to 6 minus 2, which is 4. And x is equals to 4 divided by 2, which is 2, correct? Yes. That is how we are going to do it. Is this clear to you? Yes. Well, let's take more questions. This time, I'm taking one over... Can you show that question again? Yes. How did we did the last step? Here? Last step means this one? Yes. Okay. So, 
this step is clear to you? Yes. So let me rewrite this. And we have 2x equals to 4, correct? So yes. I divide both sides by 2. And so I get x equals to 4 divided by 2, which is 2. Is this clear to you? Yes. Okay, good. So let's move on and take up the next question. So let me write down some value, right? We have x over 5 plus plus 3 over, let's say, 4 equals 2. Let us say 1 over 2. How will you solve this question? Tell me. Uh, yes, how, how will you solve? What is the lowest common multiple? So to find lowest common multiple, we could use this kind of a division method. We have 5, 4, and 2. So mm -hmm. what is common? 2 is common. But you cannot divide 5. You can divide 4 and this. Now nothing else is common. So when you multiply 2, 5, 2, and 1, what do you get? 10 times 2, 20. So 20 is the common, lowest common multiple, right? Which is 20. So we are going to multiply everything here by 20. Is that clear to you? Yes. So we have x over 5 plus 3 over 4 equals to half. And we are going to multiply this each one of them by 20, correct? Right. Now, we'll simplify four, 20 goes four times, and here it goes five times, so five times three, and here it is 10. So you know what I did here? I canceled these, that went four times, this went five times, and this went 10 times, correct? So we got our equation, yes. correct? Yes. Now, we can actually rearrange when you rearrange, you get 4x equals to 10 minus 5 times 3, which is 15, correct? Since yes. 5 times 3 equals to 15. Now, we have 10 minus 15 is how much? It is minus 5. Because negative number is greater here. So 4x is negative 5. x will be negative 5 divided by 4. Oh. Is this step clear to you? Yes. Okay, let's move on. Take some more examples. <clears throat> so we'll take 3 over 4 minus x over 5 equals 2. Let us say 6. How will you do this? Tell me. How will you do this? We'll find equal What is that equal to? Is 5 times 4, 20, correct? So 5 times 4, 20, you can just multiply them at times and figure it out, or it could be lesser. But you could, if it is difficult, do that uh, thing which we did, that a division. Is it okay? So now, 20, you have to multiply everything by 20, correct? All the terms on the left-hand side and right-hand side, since it is an equation, we do exactly the same operation on both the sides, okay? So the first one, 4 goes 5 times and 5 goes 4 times, correct? So we can simplify. So we get what? 5 times 3 is 15 minus 4x equals 2. 6 times 2, 12, which gives us 120, correct? So minus 4x equals to 120 minus 50, which is how much? 105. And therefore, x is equals to 105 Inside divided by of... minus 4, which is minus 105 over 4. Is that okay? Yes. You could write that in mixed numbers, but we'll leave it at this stage here or decimals. Is it okay? Right. Yes. So that is how you do it. And now, is this clear? Can we move on to the next screen? Yes. Now, see, I'm doing slightly more difficult things with you. Uh, I'm just writing x in the denominator. Is it okay? Yes. So, if I write it in denominator, how will you solve this question? Tell me. We can again go the same way. I mean, sorry. 
So we could first take away two, right, from both the sides? Yes. So we have one over x equals to five minus two, which is three, and now we can cross multiply, right? So one over three equals to x. Do you see this? Yes. So we could do something like this first. So if x is in the denominator. <clears throat> okay, Naisha, let me now take up slightly oh, more yeah. difficult questions for you. Is that okay? The question here is 1 over 3 minus 1 over x is equal to 5. How are you going to solve this particular question? No, what is the lowest common denominator or a multiple? You can say both, right? Is 3x, correct? Yes. So we'll multiply by 3x on both these sides, each term, correct? Yes. Let us see what do we get when we multiply by 3x. So we'll do 3x times 3x times 3x, right? So when you do that, you get 1, 3 and 3 cancel, minus. Here only 3 is, and we get 1x, sorry, not 1. 1x. So let me not write 1, but let me write x here. Let me just show you first what remains. So here 3 and 3 will cancel. x remains. Here x and x cancel. 3 remains. And this was x. So in that case, what we get here is x minus 3 equals to 15x. Is that clear to you? Yes. Now, we can bring the variables on one side and the numbers on the other side. So we have x minus 15x equals to 3. Is this clear? Yes. x minus 15x is minus 14x equals to 3. And now x is equals to minus 3 over 14. Is that clear? Yes. That so is how. What was wrong in our previous sentence? Uh, we did not write x here. Uh, we did not write x here. Okay. So let's do this example once again to be very clear. Okay, similar example. So we have 1 over x plus 1 over 2 equals 2. Let us say 3. How will you find x? Tell me. What is the common denominator? Oh. Two. Two x. X, sorry. So see, the thing is, these two numbers are there in the denominator. We have to multiply with their products, right? Common. So it is two x, right? So two times x, two times x, and two times x. Is that clear to you? Yes. Now from here, what you notice is that this x cancels. Here the two cancels. And so we have a simplified version. We could now write 2 plus x equals to 6x. Is this clear to you? Yes. Now we can bring x to, we can also bring x to the right hand side. So that is easy. So 2 equals to 6x, taking it on this side means subtracting x from both these sides. Do you see that? Yes. So 2 equals to 5x, and therefore, what do we get? x as equal to x as equals to 2 divided by 5. Correct? Yes. So um, that is how we are going to... Can you just explain the last set again? After 2 is equal to 6x minus 6x. Okay. okay. So let's go through it again. So I'm just clearing it up. Okay. Let's say we are here, right? So at this stage, what am I doing? I'm taking away x from both these sides. So I am left with, I am left with 2 equals to 6x minus x is 5x, correct? Yes. So at this stage, what am I doing? I got 2 equals to 5x. I am dividing by 5 on both the sides. So when I do that, this 5 cancels and I get my solution, which is 2 over 5 equals to x. Is that okay? X. Yes. Solving equation means find the value of x. x could be on left side or on right side. means one of the same thing, right? So you can write down your answer. Yes. x equals to 5. Is that clear to you? Yes. So that is how we solve the equations. Now, 
we know how to solve these equations. We'll make slightly more complicated equation now. We will say two times x plus three minus five equals two. Let us say x. How will you solve this equation? We have x on both the sides of the equation now. So first thing, open the bracket and then simplify, correct? So when you open the bracket, you get 2x plus 2 times 3 as 6 minus 5 equals to x, correct? Yes. yes. Now, isolate the variable, bring them together. So we get 2x minus x equals 2. You can take this on the other side, which is 5 minus 6. Is that okay? Yes. So 2x minus x is x and 5 minus 6 is minus 1. So you get your solution x equals to minus 1. Clear? Yes. Now, let us check the solution. To check means I'll put x equals to minus 1 in the equation. So when I do that, what do I get? Well, I get 2 times minus 1 plus 3 minus 5. That means 2 times 2 minus 5. That means 4 minus, uh, oh, sorry, x is on the right hand side. So anyway, 4 minus 5 and 4 minus 5 is equals to minus 1, correct? Yes. Which is same as x, correct? Because x is minus 1. Do you see this? Yes. So we verify that left side is equals to right hand side. You have to write this left hand side is equal to right hand side. Let it is good to, good to write so that when they say check, it means you got something, but then you have to conclude that yes, this is correct what you got. Okay. Okay. Now let's <clears throat> do some more difficult questions here. X minus 3 over 2 equals to 1 over 4 plus X. How will you solve this equation? Um, see a, uh, lowest common multiple. Yeah, lowest common multiple, as you say, is 4. We'll multiply everything by 4. Yeah, so we'll do like this. So we get x minus 3 over 2 equals to 1 over 4 plus x. I'm going to multiply everything by 4, correct? Yes. So when I do that, as you can clearly see, this 2 goes 2 times. It should be multiplied with both of them. The 4 gets cancelled. And now I can write down my equation in simplified form. 2 times x minus 3 equals to 1 plus 4x, correct? Yes. And now I can open the bracket. 2x minus 6 equals to 1 plus 4x. Bring the x's together, 2x minus 4x equals to 1 plus 6, correct? Yes. And this is 2x minus 4x is minus 2x. And that should be equals to 1 plus 6, which is 7. And therefore, x is equals to minus 7 over 2, correct? Have a good look at it. Do you understand what we did here? Uh, you were saying something on audio voice. I was not able to hear you at that time. You were saying at the end. Uh, which step is not clear? No, no, my steps are clear. Yeah. But you were saying something after the equation. You were saying something and I was not able to hear at that time. So at the end, we have minus 2x equals to 7 divided by minus 2. Right? So when you divide by minus 2, you get x equals to minus 7 over 2. Now look here. We when we divide, let me just well, let me just show you this step again. I got this. 7 divided by minus 2, that is also equals to minus 7 over 2. Okay. Are all these steps clear to you? Yes. Okay, let's move on and now try to do more questions. This time you have to help me more to do, okay? So I have a question which is 2 by 3, x minus 5 equals to, let's say, 6. How will you solve this equation? Tell me. 
18 is 6. How will you solve this equation? So we have 3 in the denominator. We could cross multiply, right? Yes. Or you could multiply by 6 on both the sides, right? Yes. So you would do that. So let us say we are multiplying by 3 on both the sides, right? In that case, this 3 cancels. And what remains is 2 times x minus 5 equals to 18, right? Is that clear to you? Which yes. is similar to saying that cross multiply. Is it okay? Yes. And now you open the bracket and solve. So we get 2x minus 10 equals to 18. Bring 10 on the other side. So 2x equals to 18 plus 10, correct? And now we have 2x equals to 28. x is equals to 28 divided by 2. So we have our solution that x is equals to 4, 14, right? 14, yes. So that is how such equations can be solved. Okay, so yes. now I would like you to try some questions and tell me how will you solve these questions, right? So we have two times x plus five. Oh. Equals I just to... two minutes. Yes. 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 Okay, so Naisha, we learned many techniques. Now, here are some practice questions for you. So, let me write down randomly. So, we'll do first question is x plus half equals to, let's say, 5. Then we have a question, which is 2x minus 3 equals to 7. Now, let's solve these questions one by one. First one, how will you do the first one? Tell me. You want to multiply by sides. 2 each side? Yes. yes. So we get 2x plus 1 equals to 10, correct? Yes. Now we can simplify taking numbers on one side, variables on the other side. So we get 2x equals to 9 and x is equals to 9 by 2. Correct? Yes. On this side, how will you do it? Again, add, again, add, add 3. Again. So when you yes. add 3, you get 7 plus 3. So we have 2x equals to 10. x is equals to 10 by 2. And we know x is equals to 5. Correct? Yes. So let me take more questions. So this time. Just a second. Is, just a second. Yes. Uh, okay, okay. Now let's take more questions. Now we have distributive property involved. Two times x minus three is equal to seven. How will you solve this question? We will multiply with x and minus 3. Correct? Again, right? So we have 1 over 3, 6x minus 9 equals to 2. So let me rewrite this uh, on a fresh page and then do it.
correct? So that is the question which we are going to do. <clears throat> we'll follow two different methods. So in the first method, I'm going to open brackets. And in the second method, I'm going to do cross multiplication. Is that clear to you? When you yes. open the bracket, it really means that you multiply the outside term with both inside terms, which is called the distributive property. Is it okay? Correct? So when you do that, you get what? So you get one third of 6x minus one third of 9 equals to 2. Is that clear? Yes. So what is one third of 6x? 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we get 2x. 9 divided by 3 is 3, correct? 3. And you get 2. Now you add 3 on both sides to get 2x equals 2. 2 plus 3. Plus 3. So 2x is equal to 5. And x is equal to 5 over 2. Is that clear to you? Yes. So we got one solution. That is one method. Now let's do cross multiply. So when you do cross multiply, then 3 gets multiplied with, let me rewrite the equation. 1 over 3, 6x minus 9 equals to 2. So when you cross multiply, you get 6x minus 9 equals to 2 times 3. Is it okay? Yes. So you get 6x minus 9 equals to 2 times 3 is? 9. Six. And now we'll add 9 on both the sides. So 6x equals to 6 plus 9, right? Yes. So 6x equals to 15 and x is equals to 15 divided by 6. Is it okay? Yes. You see 5 over 2 and 15 divided by 6 is different, but they are same. Simplify it, correct? Yes. So you can divide both by 3, you get 5 over 2. And therefore, the answer is exactly the same, which is 5 over 2. Is that okay? So yes. we have our answer, x is equal to 5 over 2. Either method you do. Is this clear to you? Yes. Perfect. So that is how we are going to solve questions. So today's class, we will end at this stage, you need to practice how do we solve equations, linear equations in one variable? And then in next class, we'll talk about word problems, correct? Yes. Great. So I would like you to explain how to solve equations. Tell me, how do you think we should be solving equations? Can you tell me, explain in general? Like what method will I uh, choose? It depends on the question, right? So, what yes. are the different ways of solving equation which you have learned today? A linear equation, cross multiplication, and um, then we have learned one more method just with cross multiplication. Yeah. So, what we learned today is that in solving equation, we have to perform order of operation in the reverse order. Do you see that? When we had 2x plus 5 equals to 3, we did minus 5 first, right? And then yes. we divided by 2. And then we divide by 2. So we do reverse operations in solving equations. That is one thing. Correct? Second, yes. we have to bring variables on one side and the numbers on the other side. And in doing this, we could use sometimes the properties of Distributive property to open the bracket and simplify. We could use cross multiplication if you have a proportion type of an equation, correct? So these yes. are different strategies which we could use in solving equation. So at this stage, I would like you to practice some questions from your book. I will also give you a worksheet so that you can work practice from worksheet. And then we'll take our word problems in the next class. Is it okay? Yes. Okay, then. Great. Have a good day. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.